Now this is what I call an entertaining franchise. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for clicking on this video and I know a lot of people really enjoy this franchise so I bet they are so happy that I am doing a ranking. And I did a short on this just because I was like lazy and I had uh, just had surgery so I decided why not just put a short together just so people know. Uh, this is mostly for my in-depth thoughts if you have not seen this, my short. Thank you so much so you get to see my ranking and actually then yell at the screen if uh, I have a different ranking than you, but be sure to stick around for later because later I will be doing a announcement, so stay tuned for that. And without further ado, let's get started. In last place at number seven is Alien vs. Predator Requiem, a shockingly terrible film. Because believe me, the first Alien vs. Predator isn't great, but it is nowhere near as terrible as this abomination or whatever this thing it's supposed to be. This is exactly what you do not want in a film. When I first watched this, I, sorry, the first time I watched this, I did not like it at all. But um, over time, I've been like, I mean, there's Predator, there's a Predator and a Xenomorph. So I gave it like a one and a half on Letterboxd, which was more than kind to it. Film Kid, I am so sorry. I really regret giving it a one and a half. Believe me, we do. I, I now have a one and a half. And I, after rewatching it, yeah, I docked it to one half. It was that bad. And the first time, I was like, okay, maybe I was being a bit harsh on it. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can see some of the action. And rewatching it for this video, I couldn't see anything i saw none of it it was such a waste of my time and what's worse is i did it after i was recovering from surgery so that's another thing i was miserable while doing it so oh wow this film stinks it is so terrible it takes everything you want from an alien vs predator movie and takes it away from you um where you want to see aliens or predators duking it out you can't see it because they were so dumb with their lighting, it looks absolutely atrocious. The cinematography is awful. The characters are awful. It's so unmemorable. It doesn't have anything distinct about it. Nothing. It just is awful. I can't stand the film. It is quite possibly one of the worst films I've seen in my life. It is just a film that is so awful unbelievably unwatchable it is borderline unwatchable and I, I have no idea why but they go so dark with it not only in the sense of you barely you can see nothing but in the fact that when you're watching they just do so many cruel and terrible things to you while you're watching like okay hold on there okay yeah i, I need to swallow real quick but they do so many terrible things. Like one, like in the within the first 15, 20 minutes of the film, they have a kid under ten years old get uh, he gets a chest. Uh, no, no, he no, he gets a face hugger to the face, which means later on the film, only like a few minutes later, we see a we see a chest burster popping out of his stomach, which is just gross to see, especially from a kid. I'm going to start by saying this, and I don't think any of you will disagree with me or your monsters, but I'm just saying this. If there's one thing I have a trigger for, something that immediately turns me off, that I just immediately do not, I can't, I really can't, is when they involve babies or small children in it. As soon as they bring it into, like, horror or, like, when they start doing things like, uh, it's a really good example, uh, where... They really start to it. Uh, it's it's like very necessary for the plot. So I gave that one an exception. But this many times in the film, like you see a, a xenomorph walking past a crib of babies that are crying, and making it lick its lips, and making it very much implied what happens later, and you know exactly what most likely happened to those babies, and it also has uh, 
a xenomorph impregnating a pregnant woman that's in labor, meaning that not only she dies, but uh, we see the chest burster popping out of her stomach, which also kills the baby. But when you put the babies in there, it just gets awful. It's like you ca I can't enjoy watching children and babies having to suffer. Is it someone, if it's like a bad guy or just someone that's really evil that's a grown up, I will enjoy it. But when you bring babies and small children into it, I can't get into it. It's just so unbelievably awful that they would do this. And it is just a gross film. I absolutely hate it. And it is a film I wish, I wish I could say I will never watch it again. But, Film Kid, I know you are so happy about the fact I got Predator 2 in here and that I haven't purchased, and luckily there's only one scene. So I know that you are immediately going to grasp the concept that now our next genre challenger's ranking is going to have to have the Predator and Alien franchise in it. Dang it, that means I'm going to have to rewatch this film again. Oh, man, I'm gonna, I really should not, I really need to stay away from this film. And the worst part about it is, I watched the unrated cut, which is longer and bigger and more violent, so... And to add insult to injury, the ending is awful. The ending where they nuke the town, because they su they set up all these characters, and I'm like, You just killed, like, half of the main characters! Why were you gonna do that? Why did you set them up? Because some of those were, like, the most... They were the ones that you spent the most time on, and you just killed off half of them. Oh, and the worst part about it is the aliens and the xenomorph, uh, the predator and the xenomorph fighting, which is what I really wanted to see. They get destroyed in the blast too. The pathetic thing was that might have been the, the most that we actually see of the predator and the xenomorph in that scene because the nuke blows up, so you see a brief uh, glimpse of them, and it, it's like so bright, so you can actually see them. And I'm like, oh, hmm. So that's what it looks like when they uh, fight when it's rated R. Wow. Didn't actually get to see that. But, oh no, guys, I absolutely hated this film way more than I did the first time. <sighs> film Kid, why? Why do we always have to put in the Predator? Why did, Why are we going to need to put in the Predator and the Alien franchise together? But it is an absolute dumpster fire, so this is easily the worst film in this franchise. Huge leap in quality, but at number six, I have The Predator, a shockingly not good film. A, I did not enjoy this one either, but I would definitely say it is better than Alien vs. Predator Requiem. But I I think this one's just more rewatchable because Alien vs. Predator Requiem just shows how cynical a movie can be. This one has fun with it at times. Like, like there's some really funny Shane Black dialogue. It's not the best, but it's a very it's more disappointing than a uh, Alien vs Predator Requiem because this is Shane Black we're talking about. He's a great writer, and especially when you take him into the Predator franchise, um, and this is Shane Black we're talking about. He's awesome. You take him take into the fact he was in the original Predator, and he actually did some touching up on the script. This should be like oh wow, this is gonna be like. This is gonna be like the this is gonna be like the best in the franchise, and it turned out to be a bit of a jumble mess. And I still don't know is this I still don't know if this is Shane Black's cut. I have no idea if this is the version that he made or because if like if you watch the trailers, there's an entire section like with a tank deleted from it. They make it where. All, a lot of the things that are weird, especially in the third act, like where a villain, the the person that you would claim above all others in the film, is the main bad guy and antagonist of the film. And in a blink and you'll miss a moment, he gets taken out and I barely managed to catch it. I saw it barely. Barely. It is that quick. And But I do enjoy the first like 45 minutes. Uh, it's like really, it, as soon as we get to the CG Predator... That CGI big big guy, it just goes off the rails. It just completely goes off the rails. It's a two and a half star, so I enjoyed it more than I did the first time. I gave it like a two star uh, on Letterbox uh, the first time, so it was better than I thought it was the first time. So I I could see this one getting better as it goes along, but all in all, the second act really does drag. 
and not all the jokes land, which is pretty shocking when you think about it. This is Shane Black. The joke should land way better than they do. So I do, I think this is a, a big step up from Alien vs. Predator Requiem in a sense. I would rewatch this film probably, yeah, no, not probably. I would rewatch this film a thousand trillion times more than I, before I would even think about doing Alien vs. Predator Requiem because I would have seen this bad movie several, like, thousands of times. And then I still would have picked this. That's the pathetic thing. I just hate that movie so much. I... Oh my land. And so I will say the CGI is pretty rough in this film. So I find the film watchable. I mean, I can watch it, but it's just a film I'm not a very big fan of at all. It's a film that it's very weird in the sense that it just gets so so chaotic after the CG Predator where it just completely goes off the rails. So I do enjoy the first 45 minutes. It's like that's some of the best Predator stuff I've seen. And it's really interesting. Some of the uh, the character, uh, what's his face? The main character. He uh, he plays in Dial of Destiny and uh, Logan, Logan being far superior. Just just a note, but uh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, uh, he's a. I think he's a really main character. It feels like he's like a bit overwritten to try and have some one liners that don't really land. They can fall flat a lot. So I do enjoy this film. Uh, more than Alien vs. Predator Requiem, but I would still say I would give this one a dislike. At number five is Predator 2. I mean, I, I, this one is like a three and a half right now. It's borderline three for me. It's a film that's odd. It's just so generic. That's really my biggest gripe with the film is that it feels so generic and out of place in this franchise where... Some of the other ones feel way more Predator-like. This one just feels like... It's like Lethal Weapon 2.5. I just got done watching the Lethal Weapon film, so I'm like... Uh, all of them, so I'm like, wow, this really does feel like a Lethal Weapon. It feels like a Lethal Weapon 2.5, only it uh, the Predator is now a guest star. And that is just because Danny Glover is in it. Uh, and I think Danny Glover, he's good, but I feel like uh, he's just nowhere... Near the amount of charisma that Dutch brought, Dutch just felt so naturally charismatic and entertaining. And Danny, he just doesn't capture that the way anything else. Like, people like Adrian Brody, to be fair, uh, I know a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of him. I enjoyed him in uh, Predators. I know he's one of my... Uh, he's one of the... Prob he's probably one of the weaker aspects of the film, but still, I think he's a much more charismatic person than someone like Danny Glover. Danny Glover is probably a better actor. Actually, Danny Glover, I don't know, got an Oscar nominate, uh, got Oscar nominated, and I think Adrian Brody did, so, uh, I will say, it's just an odd one where it's just so weird and generic about this very weird cop story, and it feels like whenever the Predator is not on screen, I'm just not interested in it. It just feels like I'm distant from the film and I don't want to like it's just I'm so uninterested I have no idea why because on paper this one should be pretty good in execution it's one that it just always feels at arm's length to me I enjoy the film I, I mean it's watchable but of all the films on here this one is the most take it or leave it it's the most I mean I can have it or I couldn't it's just one I'm it's not like, ooh, yeah, Predator 2, that's a classic. It's not like I'm going to say it's a classic. I would say there are many other films on this list that are more likely to be a classic. My top two are very much films that I can I, I can imagine being classics. Number one is a classic, but still. Uh, Predator 2. Uh, so Predator 2... It's a weird one. It's generic. I mean, it's watchable, and I mean, there's some fun moments in it, and there's uh, some good uh, things here, like the violence is pretty good and practical, and I think that, uh, I mean, I will say there are, is some CG that they use that I was so shocked at how terrible it looked. So, like, some of the things that they use, like some of the stop motion or the way that there would be, like, CGI coming down or something, it looked like a joke. It looks so terrible. If you have not seen the film, I... I in a while, then you may forget. It looks pretty terrible. I it was a joke, but I, eh, I mean it's fine. It's good. It's like three and a half, but I will say over time it it could drop down to like three. 
or maybe even two and a half. But right now, it's at three and a half. I enjoy it, but compared to like people saying that this is like the Breast Predator sequel, it is not even close to that title at all. No, I'm just sorry. I mean, I'm gonna get it. Just gonna say, I would. Oh, I may actually think I would probably rewatch the Predator before Predator Two. The Predator is just more of what I come to a Predator film for. Predator Two is just weird. So, while I do think this is a better made movie than The Predator, I would say this is, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I would say The Predator is probably more well made. Uh, this is probably the movie I would like more, but over time it could drop down, but I do enjoy the film. I do, it's just, I just find this one, in terms of the franchise, kind of overrated with people saying it's like the best Predator sequel. So, I do enjoy it, but it's a bit overrated. Now we're getting into the heavy hitters, guys. Now, from here on out, I really enjoy these films, and they are they are films that I would give a four star or higher to. So at number four is Alien vs. Predator. And this is very much something that a lot of people do not like. It is the, the second lowest um, rated on, on Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't get that one, to be honest. I think that this one is definitely a lot more rewatchable than something like Predator 2. It's the one that's probably one of the most rewatchable, and I find that it's really fun to get to see the Predators and Aliens duking it out together. Should it be PG-13? No. You're taking two extreme franchises that are known very much for their violence, their swearing, Predator 2 gave us some nudity, but still. So, uh, uh, it's they're both very hard R-rated franchises, and when you mash a two hard R-rated franchises together and your result is a PG-13 film, I still have no idea why people keep doing that. Things like Robocop, Terminator, Die Hard, that are hard R-rated franchises, especially something like Robocop and Terminator, which we all know why those are rated R. Many different reasons. But when you take those rated R franchises and you give them a PG-13 uh, like film, it feels watered down and useless. And when you try... And there's something that I will... And there's, I mean, there's some things like the line delivery is not so good. Should they have done like another thing where they like... Uh, you're one ugly mother and then they uh, say... Then they like censor it using a certain thing. That this this franchise is very what much known for bringing back their lines. You have that woman in, uh, the predator who says you're uh to the predator you're one beautiful mother. Yeah, uh, I think they, I think they may say it in Predator Two. It's one of them. I know there's one more. I know there's one more where they say it. Uh, I know they say you're one ugly mother. Uh, whatever. Uh, I know they say it one more time. Maybe it'll click to me while I'm talking, but uh, I know it's a uh, to I know. Yeah, it is Predator too. Yeah, they do say that. I knew. I immediately was like, "Oh come on, you guys don't have to keep referencing the first. You also have Prey, which repeats the line: "If it bleeds, we can kill it." You also have a. Uh, I'm blinking. Someone help me! Don't. Yeah. You have the Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which bring back the line, get to the Choppa, uh, which, so, this franchise is known very well for taking uh, lines from the first film and rehashing them just nowhere near as well. Uh, I mean, Prey was good. Prey, that, that line that they do in Prey was good. It was very much fan service, but uh, I will say it was nowhere near as bad as it could have been in some of the others, but I would, I would think they need to stop moving away from that. Things like Terminator and Predator... Bring back the lines way too much, especially Terminator. The amount of times they can justify the way they say, I'll be back, is hilarious how they can keep justifying the way they keep saying it. They say that phrase so many times. I'll be back. I'll be back. She'll be back. I'm back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Terminator 3, like, repeats a... a abnormal amount of lines from the first two. That's one of my gripes with the film. It's just rehashing it. Uh, so I I do enjoy this film. I think it's uh I think it's it feels watered down. I mean, uh when it comes to what we see happen to the humans, I I mean I probably would prefer to get to see a few skinned humans. Yeah, I'm a monster. I get it. I'll I'll I deserve that, but still. Um I think I think it's still fun. It's schlocky fun. It's not like 
high class cinema like something like uh Goodfellas, The Godfather. It's not like that inner like very high class stuff or The Shawshank Redemption. It's just it's just like something where people were just going to be like, <laughs> yeah, but l l let's just get them to punch each other in the face. And we do. We get to see them punch each other in the face. And it's awesome to see it. So much so, I ordered a uh, Alien and a Predator Lego, uh, a Alien and a Xenomorph and a Predator to get to see them fight each other. I'm a big Lego guy, I'll just say that. But um, I do really enjoy this film. It's a film, I was not very into it when I first, uh, when I first watched it. I remember my review. I think I may have been more negative than positive, and I still gave it a pass. I have no idea why. I was weird on it. I I think I may have been a bit more mean to it because I immediately after that, and actually, no, not immediately, like the next day or day after, I saw Alien vs. Predator Requiem and was like, okay, Alien vs. Predator Requiem stunk, meaning I have to hate this one. Ow! Man, I really need to... I, re I mean, I really shouldn't have hit myself. I should have hit past me, but ow. But seriously, it, this is a really entertaining film. So I would say, I mean, it's clever the fact that uh, you can still see them. Like the Predator and the Xenomorph, they can they still rough each other up a good bit. But it's mostly because they have green blood. So you can get away with showing them like do that. If it's like human blood that's red, it'll anger the sensors very fast. You can immediately get it I rated R film very quickly if you do that but since uh the the xenomorph and the predator both have green blood they can show a lot more of that so they can show like them like full-on stabbing through the heart that's it's the parents fault they were the ones that decided to take uh their kids to a predator and a a, um, a movie where an alien and a predator are duking it out it's if you guys had seen the predator and the alien franchises even if it is pg-13 you should at least be on the lookout for something that could be violent or at least that should that could pose a bit of a uh, scary thing for your kids so i do have a lot of fun with this film but it's not the most high class so i wouldn't put it higher but it's definitely one of the most rewatchable in the franchise in third place predators and this is another one that i would say is an underrated film in the franchise it is widely agreed upon it is one of the better films in the franchise but there are some people that like to trash on it uh a lot of it's because it is uh the plot's a bit weak it is about uh these uh the mo the worst of the worst of humans going to this uh being uh put on this planet of a uh, human high uh of uh, predators so it's essentially the uh earth's predators against uh real predators so if you really think about it, it's kind of a rehash, and there. And I did realize it watching it. There's some blatant, blatant times that they are very much rehashing it. Like there's one scene in particular involving that like scene with the samurai, uh, and he uh, like does a fight with the predator. It seems a lot like that scene where I think it's Mac. Uh, I think it's Mac uh, that that uh, where he uh, just uh, decides to. Uh, stay behind to kill the predator. The only difference is Mac didn't kill the predator. This one does kill a predator. So if you think about it, it is a blatant rehash in some regards. But I like the first predator. So I would have to like this one. Unless they did something absolutely unforgivably atrocious and they don't. And I think that as soon as they get to the Lawrence Fishburne section, it feels like there it's where they really kind of slow down. It feels like the entire movie, it's it's really flowing well, and then it's like when we get to Lawrence Fishburne, it feels like the movie kind of just slows down. And then the third act, it feels like it doesn't really know what to do. So it, in a lot of ways, it's rehashing. So in the final fight, it's a rehash of the first one where uh, this time Adrian Brody's character, Royce, is covering himself in mud and like doing his best Christian Bale voice and telling him to, come on, come on, come and get me. Well, wow, that's actually a pretty good. That's actually a pretty good impression of him. I'll try and show the clip of what he sounds like. I'm here. Kill me. Come on. But if you think about it, that, actually sounds just like him. So, should uh, I think Adrian Brody? I he's never bothered me as much as he should. But I will say he is definitely trying too hard. He is blatantly trying to come off as Dutch. Just uh, Adrian Brody, no disrespect to the guy, he just doesn't have the charisma that Arnold has. Arnold eats up the screen, eats up the screen when he's on screen. You immediately love his character, so it feels like here he's trying too hard. It's one of the most violent films of the franchise, so 
I'll give it that. I also enjoyed that part. I mean, it's really good to see some really good gory action when it comes to the Predator films. I know, I know, I'm a demonetized idiot. But, hey, what I, what can I say? It's really cool to see what the Predators can do when they're angry. And it's uh, it's always odd uh, that, uh, I mean, it's... I, I, I'm more mixed and uh, more confused on the fact about uh, the Predators having, like, a blood oath against each other. It makes sense in some regard as soon as I, like, rewatch this film every more now and again because I'm hopefully we'll get a Prey sequel soon. It'll give me an excuse to have to rewatch these films or if Film Kid does a, uh, uh, if Film Kid orders me that we're putting Alien and Predator in a franchise, uh, th- uh in a franchise genre challengers ranking again, I will rewatch all these films. Dang it, that means I have to rewatch AVP too. Thanks a lot, Film Kid. But anyway, I, I think it's a really interesting film. I think it's a really good film. In the past, there were flaws with it, but I think I'm just getting more accustomed to it, and I just think that it's like the the last half that really slows it down, because otherwise, this is a great Predator sequel, and you notice I said sequel. This is a sequel to Predator. They, they are very clearly telling you it's a sequel, because there is a line in here that very clearly tells you when, uh... What's her? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, she plays in the New Mutants. Uh, the main actress of the film, where she talks about Dutch and how he went here and what he saw. There's many times that we actually hear what Dutch said. Apparently, so I I really do wish we could see something with Dutch. Like I wish that we could have like one more like Predator movie where we get Dutch and like he's an old well like he's older like what he would look like in like Terminator Dark Fate and he's like been. Uh, and he's, like, almost, like, Sarakana, and he's, like, uh, kind of been preparing just in case this happens again. Maybe don't go as dramatic as, like, uh, Sarah Connor. She does get a bit dramatic at some points, I guess. She was, uh, a robot did try and kill her, but just dial it back a bit. Just a bit. So, I think it would be awesome if we got that. That would be an awesome, like, face-off, like, one la- like one last uh, Predator film to end all of them. Or uh, after, like, a Prey sequel, of course, because I love me and my Prey. So, I really would enjoy a sequel to that film. So, uh, obviously, it hasn't been mentioned yet. So, I really do enjoy Predator. So, it is an awesome film that I have a lot of fun with. So, it's just really the back half that really weakens it for me. But other than that, it's a really entertaining film. Our runner up is Prey. And I will say this and I thought and I never thought I would admit it. I did think it was a bit it was probably recency bias why I said I legitimately said this was, was in my top ten of all time when I first saw it. It is not. But it is in my top one hundred, so I mean that's something. So this is a very great sequel. Technically it's a prequel actually, so it's a technical it's a very great prequel to Predator. So this is a sequel that Dang it, prequel. Man, sorry. I've had to cover mostly prequels. I don't. Why am I? Let's try that again. Okay, so I have been covering mostly sequels of this franchise on this list so far. So you cannot blame me that I got that mixed up. Anyway, like I was saying, I think that this is definitely one that will try to go much more simplistic and back to its roots with the Predator franchise, where uh, this one is one that's, a, it's not like as big, much of a blockbuster to Hulu original, so it's more small scale, and and I I hate what the internet does, where it immediately tried to ruin it, saying, this film is woke, it sucks. Black Christmas 2019 is what I can call a woke film, and I haven't even seen it. There are many films I would call woke. Only an idiot would call this film woke. It is in no way woke. It's just today's society. You guys are woke. The only reason people think it's woke is because it has a woman as the main lead. Wait, a uh, quick question. Uh, the Terminator has Sarah, has Sarah Connor as the main character. So the Terminator's woke then, right? That's what I thought. But anyway, I would say that it's not a woke film. It's a film that you can clearly tell. Like, she's not this, like, extremely just a very smart person that knows exactly what to do and is immediately, like, kicking the Predator's butt. You could call it woke if it did that, and I would not have a problem. But the thing is, she is very much someone that is learning throughout the film. If you take a look, 
she only is getting she only manages to kill the predator because of the fact that he's been wounded several different times because once because he uh well several times it's because the people around her are helping her out like they're learning with her and they're getting killed but they're taking damage uh he's taking damage from everyone else and uh she's just learning she's paying attention she's sorry uh she's being smart something that is very very well used that she is a march that she is one of the smartest in this franchise in terms of character. She's one of the smartest characters in the franchise. And she's someone that is independent. She's on her own. And she's learning. And it is a great film. My only flaw with the film, my only flaw is one thing that a uh, buddy of mine, Nick, uh, who's also going to be in our, uh, like, uh, dang it, our, uh, our ranking with the genre challengers, uh, he even pointed this out to me and I realized, oh, Oh, yeah. That I noticed after I watched the film is that... My only flaw is I think the Predator does die too easily. If you take a look at the... Be Sorry, I say if you take a look. That's mostly my word. If you go back to... Or I think it's like around the middle part of the film. Uh, the Predator gets his mask knocked off. And the mask is how he aims. So he gets it off. and uh, so, But he's still aiming. So he then fires it. And then just the... It's like a boomerang type thing, so the arrow goes, and then it, like, swings around, and he sees it, and he barely manages to miss it, and it nearly kills him one time. He then gets his mask knocked off again in the third act, um, and because he's not paying attention, he then stupidly, even though it was still aiming and he didn't have it on, he fires it again, and it gets him killed. I think that was a bit lazy. You uh, of all the things you had to get him killed because he didn't he made it, he decided to repeat a decision he probably shouldn't even shouldn't have even made in the first place. Like it's like fool me like like uh, sorry. I really have a problem with stuttering. You guys should know this because you've been paying attention to my videos. It's just you fire something once, shame on shame on whoever wrote that in shit if you if you shoot it again twice that's just on you so the fact that he does it twice is a bit overboard for me but other than that i think it's cool i think it's a it has some of the best cinematography of the franchise and i think it's a lot more simplistic and quieter so which is why i think franchises that are dead in the water and have completely fizzled out terminator I'm looking at you I think that they should take examples from Prey and stop trying to go complete blockbuster and just like do a much quieter film, especially since <laughs> the last film in the Terminator franchise really was not received well. I mean, critics received it pretty well, but the, the financial success, they fell on their face hard. I don't think even they thought they were going to fail that bad. So I think that I really wish that people... Uh, we're not as mean to it saying, like, this film was woke trash, even though it is the highest rate on Rotten Tomatoes, which is surprising. Uh, but I do think that this film is an awesome film, and I would definitely say it is one of the best in the franchise. But easily coming into first place for me is still the original Predator. One of the greatest films of all time. And one of those films that just seamlessly balances so many genres. It can be an adventure with like uh, some of the things like them going into the woods. It's a horror film. It's a sci-fi film. It's an action film. And it works with all of them so well. It doesn't feel like they're clashing. It feels so natural and like they're doing it in such a seamlessly fun way. I need to rewatch this film. I haven't watched it in like two weeks been like so long and so this is one of my favorite films of all time i think that the score here is absolutely fantastic the way it's like uh that's a fantastic score and i it really fits the jungle vibe so it really feels like it's a score for a great thing so it is a masterpiece of a film i think that it's one of the this is actually the biggest compliment i will give it um, things like Jingle All the Way, Total Recall, Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, Commando, True Lies. I think of them as Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicles. And their films where Arnold dominates the screen time. 
dominates the screen and like you're just hooked on him. Even Batman and Robin, which is not a good film at all. I I think of it as an Arnold vehicle, which is probably not a good thing. And the best and the best thing I can get I can say about this film is it doesn't feel like an Arnold vehicle at all. He feels like he's naturally just a character in the film. Like like if this was before his career and he didn't really have all of everything, which he still does. He still has plenty of his uh, lines like stick around and you're one ugly mother. I'm not gonna finish that line. Boy, I really wish I could. As soon as I'm 18, I'll say it. I really wish I could though. But there's so many fantastic lines here. Everything is gold. There's so many one-liners here. It's the one. It's like the most manly, testosterone-filled, muscle-bound thing ever. There's like so many great quotes in here. Amazing one-liners. If it bleeds, we can kill it. I think the Predator design, it is my favorite design of all time. It is, this film is in my top three of all time. Everything. I wouldn't change a thing about it. It's a perfect film. A lot of people like to write on the camp that it's kind of an alien knockoff. Uh, uh, yeah. In a way, it has a similar plot line. Uh, that uh, people are in a place where they cannot escape from this monstrous type thing. So it's like that. But if you think about it, it's a much better made film than Alien. Alien's way more slow paced film has a much better it has much better characters than Alien, which is it's not really an insult to Alien. It's just Aliens has much better characters than Alien. Predator, I would say Arnold is a better uh, protagonist in it than Sigourney Weaver and Alien. Aliens is really where she steps in as like one of the greatest final girls of all time. Uh, so it's not really the first one where people were like, oh man, she's like the greatest thing of all time. It was mostly in the sequel that gave us that. Although people did still really enjoy her in the first film. but So I, I think it's an absolute classic of a film. It's hailed as one of the best sci-fi horror films of all time. This... If we're go, if we're being honest, this is definitely my f my favorite horror film of all time. I would consider this a horror film. So, if we're without mixing in the subgenres, if if we're not mixing in the subgenres, it would be Scream. But if we're mixing in like I can include that, I would say Predator has a lot of those vibes. I think it's very brutal for its time. Apparently, the scene where uh, like Mac gets killed. Apparently, I think there was like an ex. Uh, back when they released in theaters, they actually had a scene where it was extended, so we see what happens, and it was, uh, and how Mac dies. In the, in this cut, in the cut that we have, we don't know what happens to him, all we know is, we, all we do is hear a scream, uh, that sounded like he was apparently awful to, to endure. Apparently, they actually did have the scene, that's what it's rumored to, and it was apparently so vile and graphic and bloody and gory, they had to have it removed, it was apparently that bad. And this was the 80s, it's not like uh, something like Evil Dead Rise or The Evil Dead, where they went full on carnage, like Terrifier 2 level. I have no idea how they could have gone that bad, but apparently it was, because apparently it got cut, and like the, they had to like... Uh, cut it out. That would have been awesome to see. I still wish that we had we had an extended cut of this one. It's one of those films. It is a timeless classic. It's one of the most rewatchable films of all time. This is the most rewatchable of any of Arnold's movies. This is the one I can throw on the most. The one I could be like, oh yeah, I'm eating this up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me more. Give me more. Unless it's more like Predator Two, in which case I enjoy it, but. Give me more of the original first. I love the original 10,000 trillion billion times more than Predator 2. So, all in all, guys, a 10 out of 10 film. There's nothing I would change about this. I think the characters are awesome. The cinematography is pretty decent. The action is great. The horror is great. The everything about it is great. So, this is easily number one in this list. There you have it, everyone. There's my ranking of all seven Predator films from worst to best. In last place, by a landslide, is Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Huge leap in quality. In, at number six is The Predator. At number five is Predator 2. At number four is Alien vs. Predator. At number three is Predators. At number two is Prey. And easily, astronomically, in first place is Predator. And... This is definitely a franchise that is very consumable for me, except for one 
awful film and one film that's entertaining but isn't a good film that I... I mean, not really entertaining. It's a film that's bad, but I'm not bored by it, but I can still, like, watch it. Except for that, I really enjoy this franchise, and uh, I do really enjoy this franchise. And make sure to check out the Genre Challengers. We're doing a ranking around February 30th. So, a uh, special announcement uh, of that, and as well as the fact that we have a new guest on there, Nick from the Movie Ranker. Uh, I will put the link to all of the... Uh, all of the genre challengers in the description below, as well as the... All of them have done a ranking of the Predator franchise, except for Hasta. I will not put his video in there because it does not exist, because he has never made a list of them. So I will put the my, uh, uh, Jay, uh, Nick, and Film Kids ranking. So be sure, if you like the Predator franchise, what are you still doing here? Check theirs out. Theirs is awesome. You may disagree with Nick a bit, but still, um, I did a lot, but still, I do really suggest that you check these guys out. They are awesome, and make sure to stay tuned for February 30th if it does not get delayed again like Deadpool 3. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not saying that Deadpool 3 is going to be delayed. I'm just saying that it got delayed. Uh, I, think, I think it actually did get delayed, so I was making a joke about how they got delayed, so... Uh, Hopefully this will not get delayed again. We had to delay it because I couldn't get Daniel Craig uh, uh, knocked out quite yet. I, I'm going to start Brosnan soon, so I just need to get done with uh, Dalton. I got through Roger Moore, and his was rough to get through. His guy, yeah, yeah, he had some good films, but boy, he had some not good films. So I will try and get some of the others out, and uh, make sure to check theirs out. We will be ranking... Several action franchises of Rambo, Die Hard, The Expendables, uh, John Wick, Mission Impossible, and Daniel Craig's James Bond. Those are all the franchises we are ranking them and putting them in the hat and seeing which one comes out on top. Make sure to check that out when it comes out and be sure to, uh, because and to watch all of our videos and as the as the. Uh, Time goes on, people like Film Kid and I will especially be, like, promoting it as, like, uh, giving you, like, more details, and anyone can do, like, the thing that we did last time, where the last time we did it, I did, like, a little sneak peek, uh, with Age of Ultron, and then everyone followed suit, uh, do, uh, telling, like, where Age of Ultron went. Hater Hosta! Uh, that was a knock on how Hosta added too low. Thanks a lot, Hosta, but across the Spider-Verse gets that special treatment. I'm still harping on that, by the way. I'm still angry about that. But uh, overall, this is a pretty good franchise. So check out the Genre Challengers. Check out the Predator ranking. And make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. And have a good one.